I feel that to understand a country, you need to know more than just look at its politics or economics or military strategy. You have to understand its soul. In traditional China, religion and politics were interchangeable. The emperor was the son of heaven, and everything had a religious element. So if you wanted to change the political system, you had to get rid of religion. At the end of the 19th century, there were about a million temples in China. By the mid-20th century, just 50 years later, there were only half that number. So 500,000 temples had been destroyed in 50 years. By the end of the 20th century, about another 400,000 had gone. So there was a wave of religious destruction that was visited upon China. It's almost without parallel in world history. Chinese have always tried to figure out how to live a moral life. And now these old values are coming back. People want to find a deeper meaning in life. They feel there's more to life than just making money. And so they're looking at different things, looking at traditional religions and looking at other religions like Christianity and new ideas as well. I spent time meditating in caves in southern China. I hung out with Taoist priests in the countryside of Shanxi, and I spent a lot of time with an underground church in Sichuan. I also spent time with pilgrims in Beijing. So I lived with these people, spent months and months with them over the past few years, and tried to bring all this together in one book. I think in looking at this book, you can see some of the things that motivate people in China, make them tick. Maybe after reading this book, people will understand that for all the gap there is between China and the rest of the world, there are a lot of common points as well.